Welcome back to Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at the business of dentistry. Look here. I am joined by a gentleman who helps us have these beautiful smiles all the time. You and I, right? Cool. Right. So I'm joined by Dr. Martin Mashira, uh, who is the chief dentist at the Elephant Dentist. Denti dental clinic. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin, for creating. Martin Moshira, for Thank creating you. time to be with us. Thank you. How are you feeling this morning? Well, uh, well, I'm partly heartbroken. You're loading. No, it's because your smile. Uh, yeah, okay. it, it seems very perfect. So <laughs> now I'm wondering, where is my space? Oh, um, uh, <laughs> but well. Kazi <laughs> German. <laughs> what does it take to be a dentist, Martin? I would say first takes passion. Okay. And uh, like for me, I would like to thank my uncle. May he rest in peace. Uh, you see, when you grow with the a dentist in the family, back then they were just doctors, not dentists. Yeah, I used just to know, used to know him as a, a, a doctor. I used to just look at him and I'm like, wow, yeah, Ben Carson in the family. <laughs> so since scratch, mm -hmm. I've always wondered, yes. Oh, I, I need to be in his shoes. Okay. And well, I pushed myself through school and through, you know, campus and everything. Mm -hmm. And finally, well, I can't say yes. Okay, here I, we are. I'm gradually... Uh, right. Do you think like uh, most young people who want to get into this uh, same industry that you're in when it comes to dentistry, would they have the same passion compared to, currently, compared to back in your days, considering the the situation that's happening in the country, our health sectors, we have, uh, we're actually importing, you know, medics uh, outside the country. Uh, do you think that uh, it's, it, it's, you know, it's the industry, being a doctor, is, this, is it going to still be on that pedestal level? Well, uh, for, uh, I'll speak of our, our times, and uh, I remember when we graduated, there was that uh, big strike. And we, you know, I, I was hoping back then that uh, after the strike, it would open a whole new chapter in the health sector in the country. But uh, I'll say sadly, as time goes by, I'll speak of what I'm seeing, of my own understanding and interpretation of how things are, things are getting worse. When it gets to a situation whereby we are importing doctors, but still, my colleagues and I, We've never seen the inside of Ministry of Health. You finish your internship, the government just wipes its hands, and it's done. Mm -hmm. You'll apply, 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 and with the county system, it's harder. I, I'll not speak of the details, but with the county system, getting employment in those uh, district hospitals and provincial hospitals, it becomes harder. So sometimes you just sit and uh, you, you see on TV the importing doctors and you're there seated watching them being imported and you wonder what, what's really what's happening. happening. So like, just to answer your question, as time moves by, I would say the attraction that was there back then to the medical field will gradually just decrease. Okay. All right. Martin, yours is an interesting story, Dr. Martin. <laughs> I'm sure. This is a very interesting story from employment to starting your own practice. Yes. How was that transition? Uh, let me just say there are times you I would just sit somewhere in traffic and yes, I would ask myself whether tomorrow is assured or insured. You're just there, you have the idea, yes, you've done all the mathematics, but sadly you, you're giving yourself all sorts of excuses. There is a financial aspect. You're telling yourself you still don't have 20 years of experience. You're telling yourself you just don't have enough clients. And you go talk to people out there. How will you get the supplies? They're telling you, ah, dentistry, getting these materials is very expensive. And you're there looking at them and you're like, yeah, I know it's expensive. So trust you me, the transition from being employed when you're employed, there is the insurance or assurance of salary at the end of the month. Absolutely. You don't really care how things are, whether clients come in or not. 
you just know that at the end of the month something will check into your bank. Yeah, it's not my business. That they, they, you know. Whether whether even a client comes in and you even treat them for free, mm. it is not your business. Yes. You just know that at the end of the month, there is rent for you, there is food stuff, there is you know, the good life. Mm -hmm. But the transition, there is that fast phase whereby, truth be told, you have to change your lifestyle. I'll speak for myself. Mm -hmm. Change your lifestyle. From the lavish lifestyle that you used to just live aimlessly or carelessly. Knowing at the end of the month. Things are just checking in. Things are just checking in. But at that time now you're forced to do mathematics. You're forced to now start what they call, yes, financial discipline. Mm -hmm. And some of those uh, things or concepts are not taught anywhere. Oh, what? You get me? Yes. And the, do you feel like that helps you build character? Uh, considering when you're in employment, it's sort of comfort. It's a comfort zone. Yes. Now you're in a space whereby you jump, right? Were you scared? And did it help you build character? Truth be told, yes. You have to have uh, discipline. Not just financial discipline. Because, well, <laughs> truth be told, finances affect majority, if not all areas of our lives. So, if you're having financial discipline, you're having virtually all other aspects of uh, discipline mm -hmm. are being checked in. So, yes, it builds character. You have to stop some of those uh, funny, funny areas that you are indulging in. You just now just have to focus. And best, uh, like for me, let's just say I had someone that I worked with, someone that they tell you, yes, dog, things are going to be a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be spoon feeding you. Okay? Real talk. I'm just going to tell you things, yes. Even I, for myself, the person that, the, 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 you know, the person who's talking to you, they're telling you, yes, those back years, things are not as they are right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not where I am. Yes, I was employing you, you know, lavishly doing things for you. But yes, for you to get to where I was or I am, you have to just sit with yourself, put pen to paper, ask yourself, where do you want to see yourself in the next few years? And what will it take? All right. And it's quite important uh, we mentioned that someone held your hand along the journey. Uh, it's very rare to find that uh, your employer holding your hand, uh, showing you the path, considering that you know the profession of uh, you know you being a dentist yes. now the business aspect of it management supplies finances it's very rare to have someone who is actually employed hold your hand it, it rarely happens so how did that even happen well uh truth be told again uh like you said it it's uh, no, no one uh, i believe it's just nature that no one wants just uh, to hold a competitor mm -hmm. or to build a competitor and then bring them to your level, maybe they even overtake you. But yes, someone held my hand. They, 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 I, I remember the statement they made, and I for, forever be thankful. They asked me, Dr. Ashira, Nairobi has four million people. I cannot treat them alone. And I was there thinking, wow, yeah, that's true. If he sees four million people alone, yeah, he's done. <laughs> there is no way he's standing. Mm -hmm. After treating four million people, he held my hand, took me to all the dens that no one will show you. Told me that yes, if you want to buy this, buy here first. One day you you you'll, you'll get the cash to come and get from these other areas. Mm -hmm. But for now, get from here, import from here, do this, and all. And yes, just get a foundation first. All right. One day I think uh, you know the current language is utaomoka. <laughs> Uh -huh. And you'll have the money to just uh, knock on someone's door. Yes, I want this and that. Mm -hmm. But for a start, it's always good to get someone who can hold your hand. Reason being, uh, in school you're not taught managerial aspects of our career. Okay, I wasn't taught. Not that I missed some classes or anything. Mm -hmm. We're not taught managerial aspects. Also of finances. It. Yes. Yeah. If you're misusing your own salary, you can imagine running... Uh, the finances of a company. Okay? There are things that you don't know what what mm -hmm. is done about uh, paying people, how to negotiate salaries and all that, mm -hmm. how to even negotiate when you're buying things. Because okay. uh, you've just been lying low when you're employed. Mm -hmm. you, okay, not, not everyone will also welcome you to the managerial table. 
That's very true. You get That's very true, yeah. Not everyone will welcome you yes. and just tell you that this is how things are run. Mm -hmm. They'll just be letting you to stay, to, to, to just do your clinical yeah. aspects of. Yes. And allow me to take you back on the aspect of when you're creating excuses, you know, at a point where you're scared to just, you know, jump. That's something that uh, it's new, but it's something that you want to get into. So in that space of <laughs> creating excuses, you mentioned earlier before we started this conversation, then Corona came and you're like, you see, I was right. You know, what if I started a business right now and here is Corona? Trust so, you, we, um, it, it was in March. <laughs> When Corona hit uh, Kenya, <laughs> and you're there telling yourself, "Yes, God, uh, I, I knew." I knew. <laughs> you even start, uh, you know, interpreting the Bible in your own way now. Yes. Uh, okay. So, what made you get into it now full time? Uh, you mentioned earlier that you had guys working for you as, yes. uh, when started when, when you started. Um, so, what decision made you like? Which decision did you take to just get into it full time? Nothing motivates you again, like I said to you earlier, like than when you see someone that you know. Okay. Someone who's uh, either able to just open up to you and give you things in black and white. Mm -hmm. A colleague, a classmate, or someone that maybe you used to work with, you've seen them from scratch. You've seen them build. You even went for their opening ceremony. Then now you go to their facility a few months later, and you're like, yes, this can be me. Yeah. You go, they talk to you and totally they tell you, oh, Shira, oh, what are you doing? Mm. And then you sit there in the evening, you're not, you're like, if Dr. X made it, he's someone that I've seen, you know, they even have to sell their cars or whatever, and now they're importing cars day in, day out. And you tell yourself, if they made it... I can do it. They, 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 there is nothing so special about them yes. that I don't have. Yeah. It just takes a lot of uh, determination. You have to forego for a lot of other aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can be in that position. Be disciplined. All right, so for one to run a successful dental office, I believe you require quality equipment. Was that a challenge for you when starting off the business? I would say... Financial, the financial aspect. Financial aspect, yes. yes. Uh, again, uh, you see, you do your mathematics. Figures just keep rising, rising, rising. You look at your bank account. Mm -hmm. You tell yourself, well, I need to, I, I, I require a miracle. <laughs> then the problem again is the, if you've never had a loan mm -hmm. in your whole life, you hear stories. Yes. You're like, you take a loan. What are the stories that you had? You take a loan, brother, they'll mm -hmm. come for you. Okay. They will. Because everyone keeps telling you the first one, I think two years of any business are not so upwards. Mm -hmm. so, so you keep telling yourself, no, I take a loan of whatever amount. Mm -hmm. What will I do? Mm -hmm. So trust you me, the, the financial aspect is a challenge, yes. Majority, if not all equipment and materials that are used in medicine are quite costly. So sometimes uh, there are things you just, when you're employed, there are things you just misuse. You're there, you're just, mm -hmm. uh, you're using five pairs of glass on one client, because, mm -hmm. well, they're there. They're there. And you don't know how much it costs. Mm -hmm. But now when you go to your place, now you start realizing, yes, things don't really go this By way. By the way. Things don't really go this way. The way, the way I used to be, behave at mm -hmm. someone's clinic, mm -hmm. at your place you have to be, you have, you have to really be disciplined. It's totally change. Majority, if not all these things, they're imported. Mm -hmm. They're a bit too costly. And then again, uh, you, you, there are some things you, do, you, you can't just transfer the entire cost to all your clients. Mm. You go charging some of those things, you will just be treating yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are things that clients don't really understand sometimes. We like treating people. Not, not, only, not only like we're wishing you to be sick, mm -hmm. but we like seeing our work. <laughs> you get me? Uh, the irony in there. You get me? Yes. We like just seeing you happy mm -hmm. and you smiling and we are seeing the 32 teeth intact. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for us to do all that, we have to use some of those things, yes, but we have to use them in a disciplined way, yes. All right. Yeah. And what are a couple of services that you offer in your dental office? Uh, at our facility currently, let's just say we are we, 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 the only thing that I had to get at least go and polish up on was implantology. And uh, thanks to one of the companies around, they offered us uh, sessions. And yes, we are offering implantology. We offer. What is that? 
point. Plantology, thank you. <laughs> Implantology is when, well, uh, when you come with some missing teeth. Okay. I always say implants are the Mercedes Benz mm -hmm. of teeth replacement, mm -hmm. as opposed to when people say oh. You get me? So currently we are replacing teeth. We do extractions for kids and all that. We do fillings, root canals and crowns, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Should there be a challenge? We, the, 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 the good thing with our field, and uh, I'll speak of my career, <laughs> dentistry, that is, you, you can always talk to your colleagues out there. If a case comes and you feel this is uh, way, way above you, it requires theater, you can always move forward. Yes. So let's look at how profitable is a dental, uh, the dental practice? Generally, People say that dentistry is expensive. I don't know for whichever reason. I always say neglect is expensive. If you neglect your teeth, when you come to the facilities, not just mine, any facility, things might be a bit costly, yes. A dental practice, I would say it's quite uh, a good business to establish, not just for dentists. We have enough people who finance dentists to establish dental clinics. It's a very profitable clinic, uh, practice that is. and. Uh, the only cost that sometimes uh, goes a bit too high is the initial cost. Because majority, like the dental chairs, majority they're imported. If you buy locally, they're a bit too expensive, yes. But I'm not trying to curtail their market in any way. So the initial cost is a bit too high, yes. And, uh, but once things level up, it can really peak. And once you have your clientele and all the insurances are on board, it can really be profitable. All right. In my next visit to a dentist, how do I ensure that they are credible and certified to actually conduct a procedure on me? Well, uh, like in any medical or uh, dental facility, first of all, there is the certificates. So they should be on the wall. Mm -hmm. And should you require any verification, there's a number on that certificate. You can always just take it and there's a, there's, a, there's a way you can check from the board, either from the site, from the website, the, the board site. You can just input the registration number of that doctor. But uh, again, I always say it's, it's about a relationship you create with someone. And trust you me, it doesn't really take much to know whether someone is credible or not. Are you sure? It's like, uh, take, mm. the, take, take the example of drivers mm -hmm. around here. How do you know someone is, how, how do you question someone? They, 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 question. they are ahead of you, but they just do something. Uh, and you'll be there, you'll even take the number. Like, ah, this Casey, one? Ah, this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you get me? So you trust my instincts? Uh, Intuition? Don't even uh, you know, doubt or dilly dally, it's your health. Exactly. You get me? Yeah. Don't uh, wait to, you know, wait. Is this right or wrong? Is this right or wrong? Yeah, that's why I'm asking this question, so that we can know the, the better way to go about it. You get me? Mm -hmm. Everything should be on, on the, the wall, wall. Okay. including all the academic certifications. Mm -hmm. So that should there be any need for verification, mm -hmm. you can either just call the institution, call the board, and just verify. Wow. It's your health. Don't, don't just belittle your teeth and just you know sometimes we have clients who just say it's men. Mm -hmm. You know, you can either remove it or just do something funny funny with it. Don't do that to your health. Mm -hmm. If you can do that to your teeth, it's just part of the, <laughs> the entire body. Okay. You get me? Yeah. So just everything should be on the wall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you look into this business, you are interacting quite closely with your clientele. It's more of service. And uh, how do you ensure that your, your staff, they are well equipped when it comes to communication skills? Let's just say every now and then we do have some forums. We call in uh, someone who can, uh, not just for my, my staff, even I myself, it's a learning process. There are things that we assume that we are good at until you're in a class somewhere and you wonder, wow, that's how it's done. So for us, it's a continuous process. Every month, we have sessions. I won't say weekly, monthly. Mm -hmm. We have a session at the beginning of the month as we just strategize for the entire month. We just sit, we just uh, try to check. Before you leave our facility, you have to, you have, you have to fill a feedback form. Uh, there's even a suggestion box. Should you feel like there is something that wasn't uh, 
articulated to you properly, whether, you know, communication or inaction. Mm -hmm. We always encourage you the to feedback. Yeah. feedback. Mm -hmm. You give us that. At the end of every week, we analyze them. And at the end of every month, now we call in someone okay. to get an external eye. Because sometimes uh, when you're judging yourself, you are a bit too lenient. Mm -hmm. You'll see something and you start saying, ah, no, uh, that one. Mm -hmm. That one, the patient was wrong. Mm -hmm. So we always try to get someone from outside who can come and criticize us. Okay. And by criticizing, they also build us. Because once they correct us, we will not do the same, same mistake again. Okay, so yes. how do you ensure you 